instrumentalists. We just sang about sharing Jesus with others. That's what a Christian should do because that's what the Bible tells us to do. And it is so exciting to be able to share the love of Jesus Christ in many ways. This church has shared the love of Jesus Christ by sending many cards to greet someone who has been needing uh, encouragement in the hospital. This congregation has shared Jesus with others by uh, coming together to celebrate, uh, celebrate birthdays, celebrate marriages. We can share Jesus with others in many ways, just in, in reaching out and being an encouragement to one another, because that's what Christians should be doing. And of course, as we just sang, Jesus loves and will save others, not just ourselves. Jesus will save others. And of course, the whole purpose of coming to Jesus Christ is this concept of being born again. And that is admitting that we are a sinner deserving of God's judgment apart from Jesus Christ. But by believing that Jesus died for our sins and rose again, we can have that promise of eternal life. And that's what it means to share Jesus with others, this promise of eternal life and forgiveness of sin. That's what Jesus is all about for believers in Jesus Christ. And then, of course, being born again, we go on to grow in God's Word, and that has to do with inviting Jesus to live in our heart, turning away from sin, yielding our lives to Jesus, reading our Bible, talking about Jesus. I mean, you get a Christian who's on fire for the Lord, and they can't help but talk about Jesus Christ. And then, of course, being baptized and joining the local body of believers and continuing from there to grow in the Lord and encourage others to come along the same. This is what it means to be a believer in Jesus Christ. I'm going to take us to Acts chapter 16 now, if you would, please. We'll be reading in unison from the King James Version of the Bible. You may find a different version in front of you, but if we're going to read together, let's read from the King James, Acts chapter 16, or the first 15 verses. I'll give you a chance to turn to Acts chapter 16, because it takes me a minute to get to Acts chapter 16. And I will invite you in honor of God's word to please stand with me as we read this text, if you are able. If you're not, don't feel pressured into it, just enjoy it reading Acts chapter 16. We'll be reading the first 15 verses. We'll read them in unison, beginning at the very beginning of chapter 16. Then came he to Derbe and Lystra, and behold, a certain disciple was there named Timothy, the son of a certain woman, which was a Jewish and believed. But his father was a Greek which was well reported of by the brethren that were at Lystra and Iconium. Him would Paul have to go forth with him, and took and circumcised him because of the Jews which were in those quarters, for they knew all that his father was a Greek. And as they went through the cities, they delivered them the decrees for to keep that were ordained of the apostles and elders which were at Jerusalem. And so were the churches established in the faith and increased in number daily. Now when they had gone throughout Phrygia and the region of Galatia and were forbidden of the Holy Ghost to preach the word in Asia, after they were come to Mysia, they assayed to go into Bithynia, but the Spirit suffered them not. And they, passing by Mysia, came down to Troas. And a vision appeared to Paul in the night. There stood a man of Macedonia, and prayed him, saying, Come over into Macedonia and help us. And after he had seen the vision, Immediately we endeavored to go into Macedonia, assuredly gathering that the Lord had called us for to preach the gospel unto them. Therefore, loosing from Troas, we came with a straight course to Samothracia, and the next day to Neapolis, and from thence to 
to Philippi, which is the chief city of that part of Macedonia, and a colony, and we were in that city abiding certain days. And on the Sabbath we went out of the city by a riverside, where prayer was wont to be made, and we sat down and spake unto the women which resorted thither. And a certain woman named Lydia, a seller of purple of the city of Thyatira, which worshipped God, heard us, whose heart the Lord opened, that she attended unto the things which were spoken of Paul. And when she was baptized and her household, she besought us, saying, If ye have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come into my house and abide there. And she constrained us. Let us pray. Our God in heaven, we thank you again for bringing us together this morning. And we would now pray that as we consider your word, that you would root it into our lives and help us to grow in our faith in what we know and believe about Jesus Christ. Thank you for your Holy Spirit. Please guide us into all truth in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now you may be seated. We thank you. We're going to be talking this morning about the principles of serving God. The principles of serving God as we begin into Acts chapter 16. Now we have in recent past, just as a matter of reviewing where we've been, back a few weeks ago we were in Acts chapter 13 talking about a call to service. Remember we were talking about a call of, of uh, Paul and Barnabas. In fact it was Barnabas and Saul at that point. The Holy Spirit was setting them aside for a specific task. They were being called and commissioned to a service of sharing the gospel with different churches. And one of those churches, or one of the areas of those churches, were in Lystra and Derby, and in a place where this, this young man, Timothy, was growing up, or had grown up. His mother was a Jewess, but she had married a Greek, and Timothy was the son of this Jewish mother and Greek father, and so he was considered a Jew, but at that point, the mother was a believer. Somehow along the way, whether it was Paul's preaching or his mother's teaching or whatever means, this Timothy came to know the Lord. And all of that is side background to what's going on when God had called Barnabas and Saul into the ministry. And they had, to, they had begun their ministry and they had to respond to opposition in chapter 14. They had to learn how to handle disputes in chapter 15. And now they're going forward and they're recognizing here's a young man, Timothy, as they're going back to reviewing churches that has grown up and has become a believer. And Paul, having spread their teaching, is now in the process of going forward and they recognize in this young man. Here's a young man who has believed in the Lord Jesus Christ as his mother had done and perhaps had taught him and was growing in the Lord and Paul was recognizing this man Timothy and was anticipating taking him and showing him into the ropes of ministry and calling him into service once again. And so the cycle continues. And as we look in Acts chapter 16, we're going to look at a few principles of serving God that are borne out in this chapter. All believers, everyone who is a believer in Jesus Christ, who has trusted Jesus Christ as their Savior, who has invited the Lord to live in their heart and take up residence and being yielded to the Holy Spirit, uh, are, are called upon to a life of service. We all have things that we can do to serve God in various capacities. And maybe that doesn't involve being called upon to go across the road or across the street or across the river or across the ocean. Maybe it's just a calling to uh, recognize when someone else is hurting and reach out to encourage them with a verse of scripture. All of us have, as believers are called to a life of serving Christ in some way. 
pointing others to Jesus Christ in the many different ways that we do so. There are ways of serving God, including that uh, traditional consideration of the cup of cold water. Having a cup of cold water as Jesus taught his disciples, that whoever gives a cup of cold water in the name of Jesus Christ will be rewarded for that. As believers and followers of Jesus Christ, we have opportunities sometimes to reach out into the life of another to be a refreshment to them. <clears throat> Whether we're buying groceries, where, we're, where we may have opportunity to meet people. When we're buying groceries, are you in the grocery store for the purpose of, of uh, completing choices on a menu for the sake of filling your cupboards? Or are you in, at the grocery store for the purpose not only of filling your cupboards, but also being sensitive to maybe you're going to meet someone else in the grocery store that somehow conversations get started? And you know, how is it that conversations get started out of the blue and all of a sudden you're talking about Jesus Christ and how much he's blessed you? Or whether you're out fishing, or whether you're out working in the woods, you know, when you're working in the woods and something happens and you get, you get injured or something, you, you trip over a log and you fall down and you have a frustration that takes place. You know what? Different people handle frustrations differently. When you have a believer in Jesus Christ and he handles the frustration in a certain way compared to someone who is not a believer in Jesus Christ who cares nothing about the Lord, they would handle that frustration in a different way probably with a little bit different language. You can see again the opportunity for demonstrating a difference. And somehow conversation gets started about how we are different and we're always ready to point others to Jesus Christ as the reason for that difference in our lives. Well, in the history of Acts chapter 16, we have Paul and Barnabas having spread the teaching about Jesus through the island of Cyprus, up into Pamphylia, and on to Iconium, Lystra, and Derbe. And then after reporting back to their home church in Antioch, Paul and Silas now go back to the same churches, this time over a land route, perhaps in a different and reverse order. And we come, first of all, to Timothy. In Derby and Lystra is an area where they had ended up last. And our first principle that we find of serving God is borne out in recognizing Paul and Silas and their coming to Derby and discovering Timothy. Our first principle of serving God is called qualification. The qualifications, I'd like to look at the qualifications of Timothy as to why did Paul and Silas look upon Timothy and say, you, you look qualified, we'd like to take you with us and be part of our ministry. What do we know about Timothy? As we've already mentioned, his mother was a Jewess, and so he was considered to be a Jew, and his mother is one that believed But we're also told that this Timothy was, in the first part of the verse, a certain disciple. And as we discussed with our younger children during the Sunday school hour, what does it mean to be a disciple? That is to be a follower, a learner from Jesus Christ. This man Timothy was a disciple. In other words, he had accepted Christ as his personal Savior, trusting him for forgiveness of sin, and was growing in the Lord, he was a disciple. His mother was a Jewess, and that means that he also was a Jew. The first qualification of anything that we can do in serving God is the qualification of, first of all, being a believer, a disciple of Jesus Christ. There are a lot of people who do a lot of good things in this world, there are many churches that preach about doing good things for our fellow man, but many of those churches do not have the message of first recognizing that we must be believers in Jesus Christ. We must be followers of Jesus Christ because without Jesus Christ, all we are is another philanthropist that you read about in the newspaper. 
Many philanthropists get, get rewards and accolades for doing wonderful things for their, for their country, for their fellow man, for their neighbor. But if their heart is not yielded to Jesus Christ as first and foremost their top priority, all that philanthropy is just filthy rags. Our first qualification for serving God in any capacity then has to be focused on first of all being a believer in Jesus Christ, trusting Him for our salvation. And then we get to verse 2, and the second qualification we're going to look at in terms of principles of serving God is that of reputation. In verse 2, it is said that Timothy was well reported of, not by the newspaper, not by the press, not reported well of by his unsaved neighbors, he was well reported of by the brethren that were at Lystra and Iconium. Not just in the area of Derby in Lystra where he found Timothy, but also down in Iconium. The believers in the church in those towns recognized Timothy. The believers in those churches recognized and were well able to report good things about Timothy, and you know what that tells me? That tells me that Timothy was not only a believer, but active in his local church. If he was not active in his local church, he would not be well reported of by the members of that local church, because that is what we are called to do. So the second principle is that of reputation. What would happen if we were to take just anybody off the street who initially claims to believe in Jesus Christ but has not done anything to demonstrate their faith in Christ and we try to take them out and witness to others about how much Jesus has, has blessed our lives and, and uh, forgiven our sin and this, if this other person does not have a reputation of doing well in, within the church then we're holding a reputation of not doing well in the church and trying to preach and teach Jesus Christ with a life that has nothing to do with following Jesus Christ or has not learned to follow Jesus Christ. No, our reputation is very much important. A reputation of being well reported of by the brethren in the local church. If we go out and try to preach a message that people should follow the Lord but we're not following the Lord, you're not going to get very many people to listen because you're not practicing what you preach. We must practice what we preach. And I'm telling you that even as a preacher, we need to respond to circumstances in a way that makes a difference between us and how the world responses. But even I have to admit that at times I come into frustrating circumstances and I don't always demonstrate that great a difference between being a believer in Christ and a non-believer. I pray the Lord will help me to improve on those circumstances and hoping that they are becoming less and less frequent in my life, and I can assure you they are, uh, but this is part of the principle. We need to practice what we preach, not just tell other people about Jesus Christ, but trusting Christ ourselves. Not just telling other people about what a blessing it is to be trusting in Jesus Christ, but to be trusting in Jesus Christ ourselves, so that when circumstances come up that we're obviously facing challenges, we can demonstrate that we are trusting God through these circumstances. That's how we can encourage others to do the same. A reputation of being well spoken of by the, by the brethren in the church. The third principle of serving God is a preparation. Now we come down to verse 3. We have an interesting subject matter to talk about in terms of Paul wanting to take Timothy with him to reach out to the Jews. But Timothy being a Jew and not having been circumcised presents a problem. Now we have to ask the question, Paul just having preached 
that the Gentiles do not have to be circumcised and obey the law of Moses. All they have to do is to recognize Jesus Christ paying the penalty for their sin, just like anyone else. But they were told in manners how they could abstain from food sacrificed to idols because their fellowship with the Jews would be separated on a practice of that nature. But Timothy, Paul is asking Timothy to be circumcised before he can come into this ministry. Why do you suppose that is? Well, as it turns out, Timothy, being a Jew, is not being asked to set aside his Jewishness in order to be a Christian. And neither are Christians asked to become Jews, so Jews are not asked to set aside their Jewishness to become Christians. They are still Jews. They still have blessings of the Jews, and they still have the, the covenant of God's promise to Abraham in their family line of being Jewish. And so it was entirely appropriate that the Jews would continue to maintain that that sign, that the circumcision being the sign of God's promise to Abraham. And uh, Timothy, if he were not, would of course uh, create an issue of not practicing what you preach in terms of encouraging the Jews to be Jewish and yet being Christian at the same time. Not that their Jewishness had anything to do with their salvation at this point, but their salvation was as the Gentiles, Jews and Gentiles alike, both the same being required to believe in Jesus Christ and trust him for their salvation. Now that can open up a whole lot of questions regarding the Jewish nature, but that's essentially why Paul was having Timothy circumcised, was because he was going to be part of representing Christ to the Jews in a way as to not offend the Jews. If he were not circumcised, the Jews would have dismissed him right to begin with, saying, you're not a good Jew, we're not going to listen to you. So preparation, not just in terms of uh, the preparation of a Jew to the Jewish na nation, but there's other means of, of preparation. Preparation for service having to do with um, enhancing our acceptability. As I was, as Hillary and I had eight years ago gone into Canada, Eight years ago, I started preaching in Canada where I started as a pastor. Having been in Canada for a while and having obtained a Canadian citizenship to be a duel with my U.S. citizenship, I'm telling you, that opened doors of opportunity. There are a lot of American men that go up to Canada to preach gospel messages and to preach evangelistic campaigns, but the men who come up from the South in the United States as they come up into Canada, somehow they have uh, American examples in all of their illustrations and, and they, they have a, a sense of being American and they bring that with you. You know, you can take the American out of America, but you'll never take America out of the American. You take an American preacher up in Canada and something doesn't quite connect the same way as a Canadian citizen preacher. And uh, that's part of this concept of preparation and uh, in terms of reaching a Canadian audience, becoming a Canadian citizen is part of enhancing the opportunity to be listened to. Identifying with those that you're reaching, whatever means it takes to be able to say to someone, I can identify with you in such and such an area. Those are the ways that we can prepare ourselves recognizing sometimes God has prepared us ahead of time. Some of our preparation, God is already taken care of. Maybe we just need to look back and realize how God has prepared us. God has put us through certain circumstances. God has given us difficulties. God has allowed us to face challenges that are sometimes very, very difficult. And yet all of these are opportunities developmental opportunities in our character so that we can recognize when someone else is going through a similar circumstance and we can share with them how Christ has given us the strength to bear up under those circumstances and can do the same thing for them. 
preparations many times what God has done for us so that we can have a connection point with very various ones that we might need, would like to point to Jesus Christ. Going on to verses 6 through 10, in verses 4 and 5 we had and the uh, preaching going on and they had the churches growing being established in their faith and getting down into verse 6 we have the next principle of serving God in Acts chapter 16 verses 6 through 10 they had gone throughout this region and they were forbidden of the Holy Ghost to go into Asia God wanted them to go in a certain direction and they weren't quite sure which direction God had wanted them to go in. In verse 6, they tried to go into Asia. So they came down to Mysia and on their way they tried to go into Bithynia. But the Spirit suffered them not. The Spirit did not allow them. The Holy Spirit closed the door for whatever purpose for whatever reason and through whatever circumstances, we're not sure, but it says that, that God closed the door by the Holy Spirit, not allowing them to go into Bithynia. Why not? Were there not unbelievers in Bithynia that needed to hear about Jesus Christ? Maybe there were. Reasonably, there probably were. There's unbelievers in every city, state, town, province, country, Wherever you go, there's always unbelievers who need to hear about God's word. But why then did the Holy Spirit prevent them or not allow them to go into Bithynia? Sometimes I wonder why God doesn't allow an opportunity that we would like to share Christ with someone and somehow God says, no, I'm not going to let you do that right now. This is not a good time to do that. We're not, we're prevented. Somehow we are prevented from sharing Jesus Christ through various circumstances. Maybe it's by a distraction that comes up. You're in the hospital trying to uh, bring a conversation around where you can witness to someone, then the nurse comes in, and then other things happen, and the phone rings, and, and there goes that opportunity. Why, God, did you allow that opportunity to escape me? I was so close to sharing the gospel with them. And the Holy Spirit said, no, not yet, not right now. Closed door. Opportunities closed. The Holy Spirit does that for some reason. And we don't need to know that reason necessarily. But what we can see in the life of Paul and Silas, and now Timothy being a part of that, they were at least going out there and trying to do something. At least they were being active in doing what they could be doing. They were well reported of in the local church, and they wanted to share God's word, so they were trying to go somewhere. And the Holy Spirit said, no, not here. But they were still active in doing something. Sometimes we can get the sense that we can't do much for the Lord. We're not quite sure what to do, so we just sit down and do nothing. Well, that's kind of the, the wrong direction. That's what we're talking about. Activation is this principle of serving God in that... You don't know necessarily what to do. You can ask for things to do. You can ask for opportunities to serve within the local church. We can come up with something for everybody, even if we have to make up something so that we can be active in serving the Lord. And from there, every one of us grow in our service. But the principle is activation, doing something, not just sitting back and letting the uh, remaining 20% of the people do 80% of the work. And that's, that's a typical statistic that is used that really is not based on anything, and I certainly don't mean that to imply anything about this particular church. But the principle is there. We all can be doing something, activation, having it receive Christ, fitting the qualification of being a believer, and then being a positive reputation, and then being active. And I have another one down here in the verses 11 to 15. It's called opportunity. Having preached the gospel, after they had seen a vision, they had endeavored to go into Macedonia. 
because this was the vision that God had given them. This was the, when God closed the door, he opened this window. They had this vision of coming into Macedonia. So they went into Macedonia for the purpose of preaching the gospel unto them. This was their priority focus. Therefore, loosing, verse 11, from Troas, which gives us the picture of their traveling by ship, they came with a straight course to Samothracia and the next day to Neapolis and then up to Philippi. And the, on the Sabbath, we went out of the city by Riverside where prayer was wont to be made. And they went and they found where people were gathering together and he resorted thither. He met with them. He mingled with them. He met people so that he could share with them Jesus Christ. And this certain woman named Lydia, which worshipped God, she heard the Lord had opened her heart and she was attending to the things of Paul that he was speaking. She became a believer and she became baptized and that tells us that she joined the local church and then she had this interesting request. If you consider me, if you have judged me to be faithful in verse 15, Faithful to the Lord, then come into my house. In that case, I see a church being planted. A local house church where the, the disciples were invited to come together, having judged her to be faithful to the Lord, and thus opening her home to uh, having a ministry there in her home. Right now, they were meeting out by the riverside. Now, I'm not sure where my notes went on this one, but the concept of opportunity is having actively tried the doors, they found a service opportunity and they came out and they were able, because they were prepared for opportunity, they had this priority focus was that of preaching the gospel unto them. You know, we can face opportunities to meet people. Opportunities to meet people are the means of getting the gospel out. We can become focused on meeting people. And we can start out with a good intention of, of purposefully developing contacts and meeting people for the purpose of pointing them to Jesus Christ. And sometimes, having made that contact, we fall into a natural conversation about the weather and don't ever get around to talking about Jesus Christ. Being prepared for talking about Jesus Christ. When we see opportunities, are we prepared by knowing what it took for us to receive Christ as our Savior so we can help someone else know what it takes for them to receive Christ as their Savior? Being prepared for follow-up is being well spoken of in the church as well as growing and having a purpose in, in terms of developing contacts for the specific purpose of sharing Jesus Christ with them. And of course, we share different circumstances in life as well. But all of these are for the purpose of serving this one priority focus of pointing others to Jesus Christ. And honestly, they will respond first to loving kindness. They will respond first to acts of charity. And then they will respond to an invitation to recognize Jesus Christ. There are more principles of serving God in the rest of the chapter. We're going to continue next week in considering more of these principles of serving God, but for the meantime, we'll take what we have and we'll focus on what we are doing today. So our application today is that of recognizing that we need to be prepared we need to be qualified first with our faith in Jesus Christ, but then we need to be growing and serving in the church to be well spoken of by the brethren, and we need to have a purpose, a priority focus on preaching the gospel, a priority focus on pointing others to Christ. That is why we purposefully go out to make contacts, and that's what we should be doing as believers in Christ. I would encourage each one of us to evaluate where we are in that cycle of events to bring others to a point where they also recognize
Jesus Christ and grow and decide to point others to Christ as well. Let's pray. Our God in heaven, we thank you for your word this morning and as we've considered these principles of serving you, we pray that you will help us to recognize where we are in our application to ourselves. Where are we at, Lord? And I pray that you will use your Holy Spirit to convict us and to show us where we need to uh, respond to your Holy Spirit to become more like you. Where we may need, first of all, to receive Jesus Christ as our Savior, to invite him to be the leader in our heart. And then, Lord, as we grow in our faith and as we seek to serve you in various capacities, help us, Lord, to be prepared to share the good news of salvation with those that we meet. Help us, Lord, to develop those personal contacts for the priority purpose of pointing others to our precious Savior, Jesus Christ. And now, God, as we consider an opportunity to discuss your business as the business of this church, we pray a special blessing on that as well. We bless each one who is not able to stay with us and, and guide them in with safety on their way home. And may you have your way in each one of our lives. We thank you for the special privilege it is to know Jesus Christ as our Savior, to know our sins forgiven, and to know that our eternity in heaven is secure because of your promise. When we have trusted Christ as our Savior, in Jesus' name, amen. Let's take our hymn book and